You have got to be kidding me. Son of a... Hello and thank you for joining me today. If this is your first time visiting, I certainly appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Please be sure to check out some of my other repair videos to see if any of them might be able to help you out. And also if you would consider a sub to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. As for those that are returning, as always, thank you for your continued support. It means a lot to me. Today's video, we're going to be working with the 2008 Honda Element Project Vehicle. I will be tackling two issues today, starting with the front brakes that are almost non-existent at this point. In the second part, I'll be going after the clanging and the banging that's coming from the suspension, so stay tuned for that. Now, for the front pads and rotors, I purchased this product from Amazon.com from a company called Detroit Axle, not a sponsor. Pause the video here if you need to take a look at the part number. I have used this company's brakes on previous vehicles and found them to be reasonably priced and durable. As for the brake job, I did a video about a year ago on a friend of mine's Honda Element, so this following is just going to be a montage. If you need to see a detailed version of the process, there will be a card that appears right up here, and I'll also put a link in the description so you can check that out if you need it. This should have been an easy job, but as you're about to see, there were some hurdles that I had to overcome. Go down to the comments and tell me what you think. Let's get on to the live action. Now, while Honda uses those bolts to hold the rotors to the hub is beyond me, and any mechanic that reinstalls them is, in my opinion, a criminal. Trust me when I say they serve no purpose once the tire is back remounted to the hub, other than to tick off the next guy that has to drill them out. So as you can see, the right front caliper was frozen, so production came to a standstill while I had to track down a rebuilt one. I figured I might as well replace both of them at the same time. Now, here are some screenshots of the ones I used. Pause if you need to get the part numbers. 
Now, as for the suspension, there are some disquieting noises coming from the rear at slow speeds and to a lesser extent from the front as well. Now, let's return to the live action as I try to track the source of the noises down. Okay, we have the uh, truck up off the ground now. It is supported on jack stands, of course. Please don't ever get around underneath the car without your jack stands. Uh, don't just trust the jack. Okay, with this off the ground now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wiggle the tire and just to make sure that everything feels solid, that nothing like a wheel bearing is going bad or uh, the control arms and things like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab it from the bottom and the top and I'm going to push and pull like this to see if there's any play in it whatsoever, which there's not. And then we're going to grab it on each side like this and same thing, we're going to push like this and see if there's any play whatsoever, which there's not. And we can spin it and listen to it. And the only sound that I can hear is just the uh, brake rotor and the uh, pad touching, which is common. So we're going to go ahead. I've already done the other side the same way. I didn't notice anything out of the way with it. So we're going to take the tire off and we would expect some of the suspension parts, mostly the rubber pieces, and make sure none of them were just rotted clean out of it. Okay, now with the tire off, what I'm going to do is come in here with my light, grab that, and I'm going to inspect. Uh, the first culprit in this situation is usually the sway bar end links. And this is the end link here, and what they'll do is they'll just break clean off, and the uh, sway bar will just be, it'll break either up here or down at the bottom, and the sway bar will just be free and clanking around. It doesn't hurt anything, but it makes a hell of a racket. But uh, this sway bar link looks fairly good. It's, the, it's not broken is the main part. So I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss that. And we can come over here and start looking at anything that's rubber like this here. This, this all does need to be replaced, but I don't suspect that's where the sound is coming from. It could also be down at the bottom of the shock, these rubber bushings here. Then you have rubber back here as well. And all this, all this is looking old, but it doesn't look completely rotted out yet it is going to be addressed in the future so hopefully the main culprit that i'm looking at is going to be the uh, sway bar bushings you can see it from the side here where my finger is pointing there are two of those on the back and two of those on the front so that's what we're going to actually going to change it doesn't cost us very much i'll we'll show you on the bench here what i've got to replace these and go about how i go about doing it so I'm going to show you the product that I purchased here to hopefully it's going to address this problem. This is a, the bushings for the sway bars on the front and the back. Uh, here are the part numbers from Moog. I forget which one is the front, which one is the back. The uh, front ones are the smaller ones. I mean, correction, the back ones are the smaller ones and the front ones are the big ones. We're going to go after the uh, front, but the back ones first. I'm going to show you how we're going to go about that. All right, we're just looking at the underneath of the vehicle through the rear and I'm going to show you what we're after. This is the sway bar and this is the bushing for it right here. So all that we have to do is a pretty easy job. These are 12 millimeters, one on each side. We're going to take those out and then I'm going to um, uh, pull the bushing out and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that in just a second. All right, so I have the uh, 12 millimeter on the end of my impact here. Turn one in the right direction. We're going to back those out. Watch your ears. I don't like the way that came out. So all we're going to do is pull the, the little clamp off and then the rubber bushing and the sway bar swing free now. It's serrated in the middle, so you can just peel it off. And this one is hard as a rock. Okay, now we're just gonna come in with the new one. Use that cut, just slip it over. Make sure that the flat part is against the bracket and just get it back about where it was. Now this can be a little tricky because what, what wants to happen is when you put the, uh, the little thing back on, it wants to push the the new bushing open because it's so tight so just get it kind of close right about there i'm gonna put a little wd-40 on the end of these i'll be right back all right i'm back i went up decided on a little three and one oil instead
There we go. I'm ready to pop those back on. I will uh, go over here on the bench. I'll show you how hard these old ones are. All right, these are the uh, old ones that just came off. Uh, they're very shiny and hard. They, you hear the noise they're making. So you got any kind of play in there at all and that's uh, with your sway bar where these are mounted against the chassis. It's just going to rattle through the whole truck. Hopefully that's going to take care of that. Here are the uh, front ones. We're going to move on to those. All right, we're up under the front now, uh, just to give you some bearing where we're at. The catalytic converter, and there's your sway bar. It runs there, and then this is going to be our bushing right here, just behind the, the uh, front tires. These are 14 millimeters in the front, the exact same procedure. Going to take this bracket off, uh, switch out this old hard as a rock bushing. Not as much noise from the front, but uh, we're going to go ahead and do it while I'm at it. Let's push it sideways, see if I can get it out. Yeah, that'll work. Same uh, principle. Uh, you have a split. Just peel that off. There you go. And the new one comes in, and we'll, just like I had it on that flat side down, split right there. You guys are just kind of in the way where I need to be. All right, we'll flip that back around flat side in. We'll drag it up where it's supposed to be. Okay, I kind of matched it up with the where you can see where it was before. Hopefully, this is going to be play nice. I don't know. Looks like I got a long way to go here with the threads. Just trying to get it started. I don't want to just run that in with an impact wrench and cross thread it. That looks like that's good. I got that finished up now. Uh, both of them run back in. I did have to loosen this one just a little bit uh, to get it lined back up. I had to lay directly under it. Couldn't get you guys in there to watch it. So we're ready to go. It's going to be exactly the same on the other side. Uh, I'll come back when I'm finished. So there you have it, friends. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, I was going to take you for a ride and let you hear the sound that the suspension was making before and after the repair. I tried. The camera will not pick up the sound, so I'm sorry. You're just going to have to take my word for it. Did it fix it 100%? No, it did not. Did it fix it by 50%? Yeah, just about. Now over here on my bench, I do have some more items that I'm going to be replacing on the vehicle, but you're going to have to wait till next week to see that. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.